Well, believe it or not, it is now Halloween, October the 31st, and it's a nice warm day. And this is the garden. So November tomorrow. Most plants are past the best, but there's still plants that are looking good, like these colocasias, which will stay out all winter, and the gingers, which will be dug up when the frost hit. And the ricinus here, which are just annuals. But overall, the garden's still looking pretty good. These ricinus have grown really, really big. They're taller than me, so they're well over six foot, six foot five. So I just thought I'd show a couple of things that are still looking good and some of the shelters I've built uh, for winter. So I've got the shelters on the Princeps Palm and this Princeps Palm here has grown four new leaves this year and then a fifth spear in the middle. So that's grown really well, I'm very pleased with that. And as it's been mild so far, there's been no frost at all, there's no need to really bring anything in. So this bed is where my Aeoniums were but I've dug them up a couple of days ago. I've got plenty of jobs to do so I have to start doing it now. Got a rain shelter there for, let's see if I can show you that. That's my aloe polyfilla under there. I've not done shelters for these plants here. Got the nice big yucca, chemerops and uh, desilarion. And they'll be like they'll be like that all winter, they're fine. Unless it's really, really bad. So yeah, the plant's looking still good this time of year. Happy with this bed, lots of nice purples, nice lush green still. And even this bed, so the big change here is the big Oncete bananas have been dug up and dry stored. And start to propagate one of them. But it still looks good. This selenium's really nice, I've not shown this really in early videos. Got huge big furry leaves, but they are prickly as well, so I'm not going to stroke them. And it's trying, although it's a bit too late now, to flower and fruit. But I've taken some cuttings off this, which I'll show you later in the greenhouse. And I think they're actually um, they've taken, which is good, because I only took the cuttings a few days ago. So yeah, that's a flush of the Cycas Revoluta, which I will be protecting with fleece and also tying up the fronds for winter protection. Got me arid bed here with my rain shelter over the Gave Americana and Montana and various uh, there's a punt here there as well. I'm not going to protect these large yuccas, they'll be fine. Hopefully they'll be fine, as long as it's not too too wet. So yeah, everything's grown huge. It's far no, it's not a far Fujium, this is a Petocytes. One little plant in a one or two litre pot last year. And now it's a huge plant spreading over about six foot by five foot. Huge leaves as well. Musabaju, which I'll probably just leave as it is and just protect the, the base of the plants. And those might build a straw cage if I have time. Depends how mild it is. I'm going to react to the weather on that one. The Melamphus is looking really good, it always looks good at the end of the year. So from September onwards it really grows. Beautiful foliage on this. I've got an issue here with this Trachycarpus aureophilus because it's apparently pretty tender and it's very rare as well because it comes from North Korea, I believe. It's hard to get plants seeds of this, but it's grown well. It's grown one, two, and a third leaf trying to come since planted in. I think it was about June. So I'm going to have to think how I'm going to protect that. Still got my cannas doing well. And a nice large boot here as well, which I will wrap up soon. No, when I say wrap up, I mean just tie up the fronds just so the winds don't damage it too much because it just blows straight off the fields there. I'm quite high up far, far, far distance. There's nothing in the way between miles away in our garden, so we'll get the full force of the winds. Just look at this, I've got a few leaves off this 
tetrapan axe because I've just protected. This is my Dixonia sclerosa which came through last winter protected just with these car tyres and some straw around the trunk and that was fine last year. And look at this Trachycarpus princeps hybrid. The leaves are much bigger on this one than all the others. Really good sized leaf and really white underneath as well. So this is my favourite one and this one didn't spear pull. It's growing quite well that one. Happy with that. It's a bit more shade obviously because the grass is here and the bamboo but it's putting out some really nice foliage. I've had some others that are just recovering from spear pole like this one which has produced a few little waggy style leaves. Uh, but one under here, it is in the shade it's spear pulled and it's not grown any leaves this year so hopefully next year it will come back otherwise it's consigned to the, the compost seat. But they are small plants, took a chance planting them out. I thought it was worth it, see what the hardness is like. The daily is still looking gorgeous, an orange. So I'll show you some other bits and bobs down the garden. Oh yeah, behind. I forgot to mention. This eucalyptus is really showing some nice coloration on the branches now. Really like this one, it's a smaller species compared to the huge giants that are growing at the back, which is, well, we're approaching 20 foot now, this one. It was only 30 centimetres in 2013 when I planted it. So yeah, they're growing big. So yeah, let's show you a few other things. Put these shelters on now, the Trachycarpus species, because I've got one of each species in here, so I've put those rain shelters on these, on some of them, not bothered with the 49, the Nanny Tower, but the rest I have. And over here, I've still got this nice ginger, which is about six foot, just over six foot tall. It's finishing flowering now, which is Forestii. And look, you can see how mild it's been, no frost at all, even a hint of frost really. I've still got a begonia luxurians out there, which doesn't like really below minus 10. Definitely doesn't like frost, so that needs to be dug up really this weekend. So it's got to November, and still looking like that outside up in, North, in West Yorkshire, which is pretty special, I think. And this is my Fats here, which has grown amazingly well. This is Polycarpa from Krug, and it's it's grown about two, three foot in one big flush, and it's getting up to the top of that garage, and it was down there in spring. So that's grown incredibly well. A regular Fats here is flowering. I've got a Sheffield there that survived and seems to be doing okay now. I'll show you how much these. Um, Dixon Antarcticas have grown. You can see there the growth is from this point to there in two years. So that's, that's about about four inches, which is pretty good going. And same over here with this one. It's grown several inches. So they're well established now. And I don't think I mentioned this blue bamboo really in our previous videos. You can see the coloration on this is absolutely gorgeous. I only planted it this summer and it's put out some nice healthy canes. Not not huge yet, but for the next year. A nice thick blue canes, which is a Verinda 1046 selection. And it's grown pretty tall as well. So that's about eight foot tall. So in the greenhouse, for now I've just put loads of loads of small palms that don't really want to be outside because they're still in pots and um, some sort of half hardy palms in there as well. I've also got there, uh, that's my very special palm, which is Juania australis, which is settling in there. 
just need to stabilise that for here too and then pot it up again. What else have we got? Veg plots are finished. That's looking back to the decking. Still looking quite colourful there. And so we're going to the greenhouse. Wow, it's warm in here. This is where my t more tender plants are. I think I need to water some of these as well. So I've got my nice romances, which are flowering. Unfortunately, it's not a scented one, this one. And I've got my alocasias. You might have noticed earlier in the video that there's an alocasia planted out and it'll stay planted out all winter. We'll see how that gets on and I'll um, update you in spring. See if that one survives. Got my begonias. My nice ginger, loads of fresh shoots on this one. Wow, it's boiling in here. These are my on today. Got one in Eber, got loads of Morelli eye. Got my Montbelliardi eye there as well. Got all my succulents in here. That's too hot in here, really. Can't believe I'm saying that because it's end of October. It's too hot, really. Because these plants will start growing, which I don't want them to do. I want them just to rest over here. Aeoniums, agaves, that's my dry corner. All my other aeoniums are just basically just pulled them up with hardly any roots and just shoved them in a tray. They'll be fine until spring. And then in here, got my papyrus, some more tender aroids, and then also here we've got the Haniba, on today, Haniba bananas that were literally just dried, cooked and dried. I'm putting these in this heat propagator and let's see if we can get any pups on these. So what how warm is it in there? Yeah, it's too warm. 27, 28 degrees. Well, okay. I'll keep this uh, door open I think for now. So that's how the garden's looking.